So hey guys, today on the channel, I want to share this Vizio TV with you. I've actually already done the repair on this TV and just thought I'd share it with you. Even though I'm not a, a TV repair man, I do a lot of electronics repairs on my channel and just thought I would share this one because this is our TV that failed. Probably going to make this a three-part video series of looking at the backlight, taking it apart and troubleshooting it. Maybe the middle video being if you decide to replace the SMD LEDs on the strips yourself to save some money, and maybe you just like fixing things at the board level, because it's really not that difficult. And then the third video would just be reassembly and testing, which I actually just got through um, doing this part of it. So, so let's get into part one as we was troubleshooting the backlight on the TV. So it's hard to tell probably on camera, but with it, with it powered on and with the menu up, I can see input, sleep, picture, timer, contrast. I don't know if you can see that or not. Input, sleep, timer, network, wide. Got picture here. So there's several things, including if we power on, you should be able to see the Vizio V. Yep, there it is, the Vizio V in the middle. Maybe you can see that. And then when we go to menu, you can barely make out some words around the edge here. So just get you a good bright flashlight, shine at an angle. Screen. If you're not familiar with the TV, you might have to search for it. If you're familiar with the TV, you'll actually know the area to look like here on the left side or the middle. So that's actually a good sign. We know that our LCD is good. This is a model number E470IA0. And I think these are, are known to have backlight issues. So after we unplug this TV, I've taken all the uh, Phillips screws out, including the ones for the actual base or stand. And then there's also one in the middle where the stand is, as well as one where the plug is. So all the way around, with a little bit of prime and a wood screwdriver, we can take this cover off. We got like a signal processing board and we have a power supply board. We're going to zoom in and focus more on a power supply. So back now we're going to plug up the power supply board and be very careful with mains voltage. It can be very dangerous. If you're not qualified to do so, then just don't do it. So we'll use the remote or, or press the button to power the unit on. And we should see some lights from the back light from the holes here and we don't see anything. So as we go to our chassis, with our black lead or common lead. We can do the chassis anywhere. This screw here is just fine. We have our LED one, no connection. Voltage out one, no connection. LED two, no connection. And voltage out two. So our voltage out two is 120. You can see it's not very stable. Hopefully you can see that. It'll point towards you a little better. It's 120 to 128 volts. It's not stable and it's a little bit higher than it should be on a current control. Voltage out one is doing the same exact things. So it's very odd, but it looks like both banks of the LEDs, LED bank one, LED bank two, if you will, it looks like they're both open circuit because there should be a, a constant current with somewhere around 100 volts output. And being higher than that kind of means they're like open circuit. So I could unplug this and I would basically get the same reading. So since I've already verified that we have a picture but no backlight, verified the voltage is here so it's not the power board. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this apart and take the LED strips out. So I'm gonna go around and take these small, like number one Phillips screws around the edge as well as lift the board up so I can get to all these white clips like this because there's one here, here, there's one under here, and those clips actually hold uh, part of the LED backlight in. I think it's a reflector. It holds it in, so you might be able to see that there's one here by the board, one here, and I also have to take these number two Phillips out, these clamps here, but I'll do the bigger ones first, and these white clips, and after the white clips, I'll actually flip this over and carefully remove the screen. The good news about this board is we don't have to lift it up on this model. There's a clip right there close, you can see, that I showed earlier. 
that clip and there's one up under these cable. We're just gotta be very, very careful with these cables, they're very delicate. There we go, one here. All right, so just gonna go around now and take out these number two Phillips screws for the bezel. Go around and do so. And then I'll disconnect all the cables like this one that connects in. We can either do that or remove the board. These speakers, they're just on grommets, on standoffs, so you can lift them up and remove them if you would like. I'm doing it for the video here so you can see that there's a screw right there. But actually, you can just lift it up a little bit and you can get to this just fine. And we do have to remove this base mount plate so we can get to our connectors as well as this um, small screw here in the bezel frame. So this push button assembly just has little catches right here that just pops out. There's no screws on it. And before I flip it over, I'm just gonna pull these little tabs down from this flex connector. Pull these ribbons out very gently. If you flip this open all the way, it should be fine, but it does have little catches or tabs on the side that can catch sometimes. All right, I'm gonna flip it over now. So with it flipped over, I'm just gonna go around and take all these small bezel frame screws out. We'll be right back. So it looks like in this model that most of your plastic bezel screws are number one silver. And then the actual metal frame under it, it's black number one uh, Phillips screw. So just, just pull out and up just gently and the bezel itself comes off. On the top middle of the bezel, there is some black tape. Even after you get the screws out, it's keeping that top middle attached. You have to take that tape loose. So now we can remove our front bezel. So now we can remove our metal bezel. We've got those number one screws out of the bezel. It's those three on the bottom. It may help to, uh, to mark these going back. Now this part right here is where you can ruin the TV so easily. It's pretty hairy here, so. We're gonna lift the screen out. We're gonna take the connector board and gently flip it up. Either get some painter's tape or, if it's, if it's not gonna be on there, but you know, an hour or so, even electrical tape will come off and clean up easy. So whatever you got handy, just, I wouldn't use shipping tape. But do the other side and we'll be right back. I have my connectors taped up. And even though this is so thin and it flexes, you might think it's like Lexan, but this this is your glass screen. This is your LCD, so be so be very very careful. This part has some clips on it. Pretty much with your fingernail, but every now and then you got to get a screwdriver and just help you get a stubborn clip to lift off. Okay, it's about six or seven clips on each side here. I think it's nine on the bottom. Then we get to take out our diffuser and filter assembly. I just wrote top on there. And you either want to take these or just keep them together. I'm just going to move them all as one. And here's our LEDs. I'm going to label this as top also. This is more like a reflector if you will. There's those little clips that we removed earlier in one of the first steps we did. So I have removed these five screws along this connector board. We'll go ahead and take this connector off, by the way. Connector coming from that power supply uh, board on the other side. We got little indents here. We just gotta lift up the board slightly so we can slide this connector board out. And now we can actually remove our LEDs with like a scraper. So now with a scraper, I can um, start from this side. It's got double back tape on it. We'll just lift up these LED strips. And by the way, these are made by LG. It says it right there, LG display. As we get toward the center, we'll be careful. Because we've got a connector, we'll just unplug it. And there we go, that's one strip. You can tell we got the heat sink and we got the 
double back tape. We'll just remember how these go, either with a picture or video. One, two, one, two, one, two, left and right. So on this next part of the video, we'll go into troubleshooting the backlights, the actual strips themselves, what it takes to test those, the SMD LEDs that I ordered and the replacement of those. And we was able to get our strips back going and putting the TV. If you just want to order the strips to put in your TV, then you can just order those strips either from eBay or Shop Jimmy. I'll try to have some links in the description below. And you can just put those strips in and go to the third video where we reassemble the TV. So, so I hope you like this video today, testing the backlight and the disassembly of the TV. If you found this video today to be helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.